Hey guys and girls, it's David with Beagles on Fire. I'm driving myself back and my wife uh, flew out uh, Sunday evening. She had to be at work yesterday and I stayed down and uh, attempted to uh, rabbit hunt. Uh, we had no luck at all uh, down there in Georgia. Uh, scenting conditions were just terrible. Uh, dogs caught one rabbit one day and uh, my son-in-law shot a rabbit on one day and that's all we got uh, but uh, had a good time got to see the grandbabies and, um, and and all that so it was not a totally wasted trip anytime you can get out and try we, we, we definitely tried tried hard just didn't have any luck that gets frustrating but I thought I'd come on here and uh, and do a part two to the last video I made of this where I was talking about the history of how we ended up with uh, the beagles that we got and i had some different people that uh, asked me some questions in the comments and even my own daughter couldn't remember because she was a lot younger back then couldn't remember uh what exactly uh the story went from there so i thought i'd do a part two to the uh story of how we headed down the road to get beagles and uh, god had plans to get bird dogs in order to put me in touch with the right person so i'm going to try to answer those questions uh, and I am driving. Uh, I'm going to keep my eyes on the road. And I apologize if this is bumpy. I'm trying to hold this phone as steady as I can. So anyhow, as I told you, we, we ended up buying six bird dogs. Uh, my father wanted those six bird dogs because it was such a good deal. And so we brought them back. And remember I told you about the, the five that did real good and the one that took off. And we, we lost her because she just never came back and was not trained at all. But anyhow, we had five bird dogs, and from there, what ended up happening with the bird dogs is I think I kept two, two or three initially. I think it was two, and um, we sold the others. That guy that I talked about uh, was able to move those to some uh, shooting preserves and uh, sold them for more money than we paid for them. And uh, I did get serrigators, and I did go to the. Uh, to the trouble of trying to raise uh, you would buy one day old chicks and you would put them in there uh starting in about may and you would uh you would run them through uh about every five weeks and you could do about four series of this you would put one day old chicks in there it had a propane heater uh that would keep them warm you put them in the wild the theory behind it was you put it out in the wild where they would have a little to no human contact it had a uh, a waterer with the uh, water drop of nip nipples, if you know what I'm talking about with bird dogs uh, or, or raising birds, I'm sorry. Um, and it had a feeder. <clears throat> and so you would put those one day old in there and then we would actually band those and release them at uh, five or six weeks old. And um, so I did that for about two years and uh, did a lot of predator control, trying to, you know, take care of the possums and coons and and different things of that nature that would get the eggs of the quail and we were trying to get quail going on our place and uh we really all we ended up really doing was uh feeding predators more in my opinion because you'd walk and walk and walk and uh you couldn't uh you couldn't get more than two or three cubbies to get up and you felt guilty if you killed any of them and you didn't even go hunt singles because you'd work so hard to get those there but anyhow it was an experience and so that's what ended up happening with the bird dogs was uh, I kept those bird dogs for a while, uh, the, the two that I kept, and then I ended up, uh, I had a guy that had a, a preserve that I knew that also had beagles, and he was wanting to get rid of his beagles because his, uh, <clears throat> his shooting preserve was getting bigger, and he wanted those dogs, so I did a trade with him, and that's how I got rid of the last two. During that process, um, my uh, family went and got me a German short hair pointer puppy, and, and it was a uh, the only bird dog we allowed in the house if you know german short hair pointers they are like having a lab without uh, the long hair and so to this day uh we still have uh, a couple of german short hair pointers uh and i don't bird hunt really uh i've got one now that i want to get trained to bird hunt but only just to take grandkids and friends out not not to get real serious about it because what i learned during that time as i'll back up a minute during that two years or two to three years that I had bird dogs uh, I wasn't trying to run beagles on fire I hadn't even come up with beagles on fire I was just basically had had dogs for myself so I ended up <clears throat> with um, the bird dogs and doing all that work 
And I had told you that I had mentioned to the guy, Jim, that I really wanted beagles. And so what he did was he went and talked to Larry that he worked with. And Larry asked him, said, well, what kind of beagles does he want? And and Jim told him, said, it doesn't matter. He just wants something that him and his family can enjoy uh, rabbit hunting with. Uh, they just want to be able to kill some rabbits with them. And um, don't, don't want something that runs deer. Well, Larry... Uh, got me the first the first pair he got to Jim I never met Larry Jim got them and um, it was probably two of the ugliest beagles you've ever seen in your life <clears throat> one was almost uh, solid white a little short short tail um, had a, a, a brown spot on her about as big as a snowball and that was actually her name was snowball now snowball was truly a jump dog you could point wherever you pointed she would go exactly right there and go in uh, but once she got it up she was not as good at running it as she was at jumping it and they were just dead lower medium speed dogs and i had another one named rip and uh he was not much to look at either but they were rabbit dogs and you could kill rabbits with them so i had that pair uh ended up getting a third one i told y'all this all started in about april of 2003 and so I got some beagles probably around May, uh, May to June of 2003, maybe in July, and then added a third one whose name was Julie, and a fourth one whose name was Blue. And um, that was the four beagles I had the first year that I hunted and had an absolute blast with them. They were all broke dogs that I bought. Now the Julie dog and the Blue dog actually come out of the bloodline that Larry messed with. The other two did not. And uh, I didn't know anything at all about what I was doing back then. Um, <clears throat> actually, I was running Julie, who was more of an upper medium speed dog, and Blue upper medium speed with two just dead medium to lower medium. So they weren't exactly packing up the way that I know now they should, but we had a good time. We killed some rabbits. And uh, after that first year, I decided I wanted to get a uh, beagle puppy and I wanted to raise a beagle puppy and uh, see see it come on and, and go through this sending it to a start pen and get to finish it out and see what that was all about so I was at a hunting show and I bought a beagle puppy from um, a guy that uh, had took us on some guided rabbit hunts and uh, not talking bad about any of that stuff just just stating facts uh, when I got the dog home um, which I lived in a different spot than I do now. The dog never came to my kennels uh, that I'm at now at all. I didn't even own that area at that time. But the dog got sick the second weekend that I owned it. Um, well, problem was the dog had Parvo, and I took it to an emergency vet because I didn't know what was going on. They charged me about $80 to tell me that and told me I needed to spend another five, $600 to have it uh, taken care of as far as... Uh, you know, trying to treat it for Parvo. Um, there was a 50-50 chance that it would make it. And I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend that kind of money on something. I don't even know if it's gonna turn out to be a rabbit dog. So uh, I had to have it put down. I was still determined. So I went back to uh, Jim and told him that I wanted a pup. And so he talked to Larry. Larry hardly ever would even think about selling a pup. But, uh, all this stuff I was told from Jim, I had not met Larry yet. It had been kept from me just, just going through Jim. And so anyhow, uh, bought the dog that ended up being Hunter. Uh, if you've looked at the old website I had, uh, I had a video of him. If you go on YouTube and you look, you can find it. Uh, Hunter, the retrieving beagle. And now I didn't know anything back then. Don't claim to know all of it now. I brought hunter back to the same area that i had had the other puppy didn't know any better like i said that was at a totally different place that i don't live anymore and hunter contracted uh the parvo as well well my mother loved the way hunter looked uh, he was that pretty red red and white dog and she said uh, you're not putting him down she said i'll pay for it so my mother paid 500 dollars to have the treatment done and I'll never forget when we went to pick him up at the vet, uh, and he, he made it, obviously, and she looked at him, and she said, you better live up to your name. You better be a hunter. 
and and he was i mean i had no idea what i had my hands on with that dog fantastic dog just naturally retrieved uh just every rabbit he'd get to he would retrieve it well hunter had two litter mates that after i bought hunter uh another guy was supposed to get those two but uh i got a call from jim and he said hey larry wants to know if you want those other two he'll make you a deal on them and i said okay uh, I'll, I'll do it so i had seven dogs at that time i said that's all i'll ever need and uh, i laugh about that now because uh if you looked at how many dogs were at my kennel now uh i wouldn't know what it was like to to actually only own seven dogs not knocking anybody who does it's just the difference in where i was at then and where i am now um not that i'm better off than anybody else it's only because of what i what i try to do with the raising of so many dogs that i try to do to put them out there but i uh, want to go back to one thing and let you know the reason that I, what i was trying to do is i was trying to hunt um i was trying to hunt bird dogs one day i only had two days i could hunt i was trying to hunt bird dogs one day and i was trying to hunt beagles the next now the bible says no man can serve two masters and uh you know so you know that you know what that verse is referring to so it didn't take me too long to to realize that i was trying to do something that while it might have been fun i, I was going to be mediocre at best trying to only give each of those one day a week and so uh, I was more into the beagles than I was into the bird dogs only because it was so much work that you had to do to even put birds there. Your success rate was not real high. When I would go out, I would always be able to run uh, rabbits most of the time, but not always could I find birds. And so um, when I had the opportunity to trade the guy for the bird dogs that he wanted to do, that's exactly what I did and uh ended up going with just beagles and and now I, i've had people that have asked me said david won't you go coon hunting with us you'd love it and i go I, i'm sure i would but i'm scared to go and one person said to me are you scared of the dark and i said no i'm scared i'd fall in love with it and then i'd be back in that same boat again so i have made up my mind that for me i'm gonna stick with just beagles i'm not knocking anybody who has uh bird dogs and beagles or coon dogs and beagles or anything like that at all that's that's their business but for me i've made a commitment to to stick with beagles and and run those and with what i'm trying to do i definitely need that i don't ever want to be that guy that uh whatever's in season uh that's what they're doing wide open and and then they basically only run their their beagle hounds in february after deer season's over their dogs are all out of shape and by the time they they're getting in shape it's time for season to end and then they just put their dogs back up so that's that's the reason i do it is i'm, I'm so in love with being able to hear the hounds the sound of the hound that's that's what turns me on and, and fires me up uh on on dogs like that i do appreciate the way a bird dog moves it's very neat and if we had birds around i I might have a different uh i might have a different opinion but i just cannot sink that much time into trying to have uh birds and going through all that different stuff uh when i could be spending that time running some more beagles and, and trying to get them ready to go so that's kind of what happened with the bird dogs to answer that question for people and then i had another guy ask me well what did what did larry naylor say to you it was one comment i had on the last video i, I made and i can tell you this it was it was really probably a year uh maybe maybe two but um i had been given a bunch of information that you know larry was basically a guy that didn't didn't want to he didn't want to talk to anybody he he uh he lived on this place and the picture that was painted him as he was this this uh grumpy old man that was uh you know if you pulled up there and he didn't like you, he'd pull a gun on you and run you off his property and all that, which is kind of funny now because Larry's uh, Larry is very uh, firm on certain things, but Larry, if he likes you, Larry's a big teddy bear, would give you the shirt off his back. Um, and so I, I decided one day I'm just going to go up there. I knew where his house was, and I said, I'm just going to go meet the man. If he wants to run me off and be that way, then 
you know, I, I'll think a little less of him, but I'm going to go meet him. Something inside was just saying, go meet him. So I went up there and introduced myself to him and we hit it off, uh, from the start. And, um, I was a guy that was very hungry to learn all I could learn. And I had, I had met someone there that in my opinion, knew, knew far more about rabbit dogs than, than most anybody I could get with. And, uh, he's probably forgot more about rabbit dogs than I'll ever know is what I would say. Now he no longer has any dogs. So if you got the idea that you're going to try to find Larry Naylor and call him and get dogs, he doesn't have any beagles anymore. And, uh, he gave me the last three he had, uh, probably seven, seven years ago. And, um, so he just ran out of a place to run and he's, he's in his seventies now and he's, he's just not doing that anymore. And, uh, but was very, very good at what he did. Um, a lot of people wouldn't agree with his methods. He was uh, probably cold harder than anybody you'll ever meet and uh, wouldn't let anybody have the cold dogs. And uh, so, you know, because he bred the best to the best when he did do it and worked on that bloodline for all those years, that's why what I have is what it is. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's the best you've ever seen and that you can't find any better or is good or anything like that. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that what he did laid a very, very good foundation for me to be able to come in. I was very blessed to be able to, to get in on this bloodline and be able to take it from there. And I learned different things from different people about uh, how to train. I didn't learn everything from Larry, but the majority of it I learned from Larry because Larry was very truthful in what he said. And a lot of the things that, that I say are things that I've learned from him. Um, and then I've took some of the things that he did and I've tweaked them a little and made them work better for me that I learned from somebody else and put the two together um, and, and go from there. Uh, because um, one thing that Larry did tell me, uh, for the guy who asked the question that what, what all did Larry tell you, it'd be impossible for me to make a video and just tell you everything that he said. I, I, I probably can't remember all of it off the top of my head, but the very principles that I use, uh, the way that I breed and all that, the, the, the way that I do my schedule of worming and shots and that sort of thing, all that came from Larry, uh, telling me and, and teaching me. And I was just like a sponge. I was absorbing what all he would give me information on and whatever he would tell me. And, uh, very, very eager to learn and, and found that the stuff that he was telling me, it worked. But in the beginning, I was very green. Um, uh, and I'll say, I'll say this, uh, and then I'll get back on some things that Larry did tell me. I was very green. I thought that if you told somebody, you know, if you had a rabbit dog for sale, I, I didn't know anything about dog jockeys and dog traders because I had gotten lucky and God had blessed me to get with a good person to start with. But you know, if you told me you had a rabbit dog, I thought what that meant was you've got one that, you know, it won't run deer. You hit a tone button and it'll come to you. That's what I had. That's what I had gotten right off the bat. I wasn't a bunch of nonsense. And, um, so that's what I thought. And, you know, I didn't know until I went and bought a dog from somebody else. I had a guy that was selling out and I bought it and they turned out to not be what he said they were. You know, some of them stories that you hear like, oh, these are so fast. These will these will catch a rabbit on the second circle. If that rabbit don't hole up or you don't kill it, they're gonna catch it. Swamp rabbits on the second circle. And of course they never did. Um, I've, I've been offered $2,000 for this one dog alone that's in this pack, but I'm gonna sell you the whole pack uh, for $2,000. Well, you know, you learn from some of that after you've dealt with it. Uh, if it sounds too good to be true, then there's a reason for that. So, so I was, I was naive, but I learned a few things that way. I went right back to buying, uh, when I needed a dog, I'd bug Larry. And if he had something, he'd let me have it. And then when Larry decided to get out and really cut down to a very small number of beagles, I think he cut down to about five. Um, that's when I ended up, I think I got about 15 or more dogs from him at that point and um, really, really had a chance at, at that point to really move my kennels in even more of a, a direction I needed to go and um, was grateful for that. But some of the things that Larry told me to answer the guy's question was, a dog learns more in its first year of its life than it ever, than the whole rest of its life combined. 
Uh, that's why, you know, he said the importance of getting a dog started at an early age and introducing them to rabbits at an early age is because they're developing and they're learning. If you put a dog, if you put a dog on a rabbit at a very early age, say eight, nine weeks, you start showing them a rabbit. Well, you don't let them just sit there and get older. I know some guys that, oh, well, if dog's nine months to 12 months old, it's probably about time I started getting it started. I understand that you can start dogs at that age, but you can also start them a lot earlier and actually be hunting with them. And there's some people that have a different opinion and they think, oh, if you do that, you'll blow them up or you'll, you'll, you'll ruin them. I say it's right the opposite. If you start them off young and you get them rolling, that's more time you get to spend with that dog actually hunting. And that's more time that when that dog's young, they just don't know any, any different. They don't have, they don't have anything on their mind except a rabbit. If you started them out young on rabbits and if you run them with an older dog that's finished and broke and doesn't pay any attention to the deer and a lot of times your young dog won't but you also can use the collar and and you know not fry them when they're real young but you can correct them and they'll remember that and you'll have less deer problems so you know what his theory was there that he explained to me was you think about it when a dog is born they start to learn you know they don't know anything but they start to learn that they uh they start to learn they can bark they start to learn that they can smell and uh, you know you can throw bread or hot dogs on the ground just scatter them around and let them use their nose to find those just different things of that nature that that you can do to to really let them explore that nose a lot better and of course then i started using rabbits to show them and uh, that just fired them up even more uh, that was not something i learned from larry i learned that from watching some guy who just stuck a rabbit in there with them in a cage uh, and I thought, well, if I put it on the ground, and I know there's other people that had already been doing that, but I hadn't seen it, so I just tried it. And it worked for me. So those are some different things that I learned from Larry. And, um, you know, uh, used to say all kinds of different things, like, you know, it doesn't take any more money to feed a good dog than it does a bad dog. So you want to always make sure you've got a good dog that you're feeding. And uh, that if a dog's not, uh, if, if, you don't, if you don't have a dog that, if you're just putting a dog out there that's a me too dog, it's not doing anything for your pack. You need a dog that's got something that he's doing that he's bringing to the game. And uh, if you can run the dogs and, and you don't miss that one dog at all for anything, uh, then you know why do you have that dog if you, if you don't need that dog in your pack? And so you wanna use that, you get you a better dog that you, that you need. Uh, different things like that, a lot of it's common sense stuff, but just different things that I learned from him uh, over the years and uh, he's still the go-to guy if I've got a question about something that I can't figure out I'll call him I'll give you one story on him and then I'll I know this video has gotten a little longer than I really wanted it to be but I wanted to kind of give you the follow-up and the second part of the history but um, I had a dog that I could not figure out what was going on with her she was out of Julie Julie was the first one I, I bred and I bred it Larry let me breed back to uh, a dog he had named Crook and uh, that's one of the, the dogs that a lot of the blood in my kennel originated out of. But uh, bred to Crook, and she had uh, she had 10 pups. One died after a week, and the other nine I raised. That was the first time I'd ever raised a litter of puppies. I finished all of them, and one of the dogs I had out of that was named Ruby. Now, Ruby is the one that, uh, when I bred Ruby, that's what I got Junior. And uh, those of you that have followed me very long, Hottie. Uh, one named Peyton, and some of those would be some of those dogs that came out of out of the uh, Ruby dog, which came out of Julie. But um, Ruby had been doing fine, and all of a sudden, Ruby didn't want to run. I just I took her out. She just for whatever reason she just quit hunting and quit running. And I called Larry and I said, "I'm gonna get rid of this dog. She ain't doing what she needs to do." And he said, "No, don't get rid of her. Bring her to me." let me let me run her uh okay whatever larry told me to do i i had enough faith and trust in him that you know whatever he said i, I would do it because he'd always been correct on everything he'd done so i took the dog up there expecting to you know okay it's gonna take two or three weeks or whatever larry's going i don't know what he's going to do but how he's going to straighten this dog out this dog's beyond hope that was my opinion larry called me after he run the dog, I think I took it up there on a Thursday. He called me on Saturday uh, about lunchtime. He said, you can come get your dog. There ain't nothing wrong with her. And I said, really? What, 
what do I need to do? He said, take the shock collar off of her. I said, do what? He said, take the shock collar off of her. That's why she's not running. Now, I said, okay, Larry, I'll do it. But I said, Larry, I just got to ask you, how in the world did you determine that from just one time of running her? And he said, well, I had a little bit of inside information. I owned her grandmother, which was Julie's mom, and she had that problem. And uh, so in all my years of running dogs, I've only run into this two times. One was Ruby and one was another dog that I could not figure out why that dog would burn a rabbit up in the training pen, but wouldn't run in the wild. And uh, when I finally sat there and went through every single scenario, the only difference was the shock collar. I took the shock collar off and the dog ran fine and everything was good. Now I don't like not running my dogs. I don't like to run them without a shock collar, but there are some times when that's what you have to do. Uh, very rare. Uh, don't recommend that being your first choice to go to, but if you ever see a dog that's that way, uh, you try that. Of course, you got to make sure that they are handling great and all that uh, before you'd want to do that. But just wanted to give you a follow up on that. I'm sorry this video's been a little longer, uh, but I uh, wanted to give you a little follow up on part two of the history of, of Beagles on Fire in that regard. So that kind of brings you up to how I got started with the four dogs then added three puppies and and from that uh i don't i don't brag about anything i'm not a i'm not an egomaniac about any of this stuff but god's been good and we went from seven dogs to now we have a kennel that has 30 runs in it there's probably uh there's at least two dogs in most every run and some of them will have three so uh when people ask me how many beagles do you have the answer is i really don't know the exact number i can just tell you that of the dogs that are here and we're always having puppies so i don't even try to count those because those aren't dogs i'm trying to keep all here the whole time those are ones i'm starting uh we may end up sometimes with 75 uh or more uh puppies that are in all various different stages from just being born to we're working with them to get them started at different times <clears throat> and sometimes that number could even be higher but as far as adult dogs i would say i probably have somewhere between 60 to 75 that I keep for myself. And some of those are older dogs that are retired that are only used for the training pen and stuff like that. But uh, I, I do have a good number of dogs. I would not need that many dogs if I didn't do what I do, uh, trying to raise. And uh, I'll be the first to tell you, it's very hard to, uh, if you have that many dogs, knowing which ones you want to go take. I mean, how do you pick through that, pick you out 12 dogs you want to go to Georgia with? That's the stuff I have to do. And every time I do it, I'm like, man, I wish I would have brought this other dog with me. Uh, you have to leave one home. So my advice is if you're not going to get into raising a lot of dogs, keep your number down to where you can take all of them with you just about every time you go. Because the more you get, the more decisions you have to make and uh, the more dog food you have to feed. And, and really, there's no real need to have to have that many unless you're just running all the time and want two different packs that you want to keep one fresh. But that's just my opinion. Do whatever you'd like. But uh, anyhow, I hope this has been helpful to you. And uh, it, the lesson learned is back to one of the things we talked about when we were doing the series on the equipment that Beaglers can use is if you can find somebody that's willing to share information with you that's been doing it, don't try to go out here and do everything on your own. You can learn that way and you'll make a lot of mistakes. But I see guys all the time trying to invent a new, new way to do something. And if you've got somebody that you can follow and watch that will answer some questions and they, they can lead you by example as to being successful at what to do as far as running dogs and how to deal with dogs, I, I would follow them. If somebody's already got the cart ready and they've got the wheels already on the wagon, why do you want to invent new wheels? Why do you want to make a new road? Just follow the road and the path if they'll let you go down it. Now, that's what I did with Larry, and it really helped me to get somewhere quick uh, as far as being successful with doing it. So that's the only suggestion I have for you is just if someone will be your mentor when it comes to beagles, then uh, you'll have a lot of people that want to tell you what to do. Now you have to decipher through what they do is correct or not. Does it work? But if you find somebody that's straight and honest that will help you with that, then I'd latch on and I wouldn't try to reinvent the wheel. You'll get there a lot quicker if you listen more than you talk. All right, y'all have a good day and God bless you.